Today on Junkyard Digs, we are driving over to my buddy Phoenix's place because Facebook Marketplace is a terrible thing for a man to have access to. Here we go. I don't know whether to be excited or terrified. A little bit of both going on right now, not gonna lie. What have you done? Bought something. You bought Amazing. something. Is this a marketplace purchase? Man, I'm checking marketplace every 10 minutes for good deals. I don't know if good deal is the right word here, but you found a thing. Oh yeah. So we got a golf cart with a CBR 600 motor in it. And from what I've gathered, I think it's a Polaris rear end. I don't know what out of. Uh, story is that he's had it running and stuff, but I don't think he actually drove it. Yeah, I mean, it's all, most of the fab work's done. It's not pretty, don't look too close. No. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, this is Phoenix, my buddy here in town who runs the powder coating company. We do a lot of dumb shit together, and it looks like today we're adding another one to the list. Oh, this is gonna be fun. I don't understand how they put a Honda motor on a Polaris. They welded, they cut the back of the four-wheeler frame off and just welded it to the square tubing here. What is going on? My favorite part is this bent cooler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, man. unfortunately it was sitting outside. Oh, so has it been rained in? Oh, that's what I don't know. It looks kind of nasty down in the carburetors. Oh, dude, those are yeah. gross. So for sure we're gonna have to pull those and clean them. They move though. But yeah, they move. <laughs> we don't have brakes either, but oh, we'll worry about those not. later. <laughs> Should we roll it inside? Yeah, let's do it. Bye. Good. What'd you pay for this? Dare I ask? $100. That's acceptable. What's even better is he wanted $200 for it. <laughs> and I was totally going to spend that. He's like, you know what? I got 500 messages on this thing. How about you just give me $100 and come get it right now? I'm like, I'll be there. Just send me an Holy address. Cow. All right, we got it inside where the heat is and where the race cars get built. Did he tell you anything about how to start this? He told me nothing. He told me to come get it and <laughs> give him $100. We have the kill switch here, the push button start. Let's hook this up and see what happens. It might be worth pulling the plugs if there's water in these cylinders. So then we don't immediately bend something. Yeah, that's probably a safe bet. Let's pull the plugs and then and then get all gung ho. I'm getting excited. <laughs> <laughs> you guys will have to excuse the background music. There is a business trying to operate and make money in the background, so oh we're just goofing off. It's a Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, I hope there's no water in here, but well, I don't think that's gonna be the case. <laughs> they look new. Yeah, that one's bad. There's a little oh. bit of run time. You got a wet one? Yep. Should I down there and see? Nah, let's just spin it. <laughs> you can see water. <laughs> Alright, it'll be fine. Set right. this battery up. Okay, don't let all the magic smoke out. Just wires melt fire <laughs> immediately. Alright, going to run. Hang on. <laughs> oh, I gotta put this on. Oh yeah, but crazy. <laughs> Alright, ready? Yep. Run. Nothing happened. All right. Twelve point four. Okay. Now the fun starts. Yep. Shit, is this a computer? Oh, it's full of water. Oh. <laughs> it's coming out of the computer case. Oh man. Okay. Well, that should be fixed. That's okay. <laughs> I got a heat gun. <laughs> and like this has just random wires shoved in there to connect these. Look at this. Quote unquote splice. Well that doesn't even go in. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, this is just a random speaker wire. It must not be that important then. <laughs> I don't know. It's not even plugged into anything. Like this whole harness is just chilling here. <laughs> what was the speaker wire for? <laughs> it's, oh, here's a, here's a solenoid. Yep. You should be able to just cross that with the pliers. That's what they were doing. It's all burnt up. Let's try that. All right. Ready? There's the key. <laughs> Watch the water fly. Oh! <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> I got new water would come out. I didn't think it would go 35 feet. You rust splattered my wall. <laughs> we hit there. <laughs> 
Did it hit the three wheeler? It did. It hit the ceiling. <laughs> oh my god. That is so far away. Let me do it again to see if it pops in. Well, hang on. Let's catch it this time. What are we. Stand anywhere near this, I'm gonna get splashed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, it's not froze. That's all that matters. <laughs> That's runnable. Yeah, that that'll run. <laughs> that that literally flew. I yeah. Perfectly straight out of the cylinder. Twenty feet. Easily. Hit the ceiling, shot down, and hit the wall, and ran all the way down. Now I'm out she got, the shot. She got some compression. <laughs> <laughs> Already, the fun begins. Today might be the day we finally talk about how to do some electrical uh, diagnosis. So, what we have is a wiring harness to the bike that this motor came from, and there's some key things that we need to pay attention to here that we need to make this run. We are going to need ignition coils, the spark unit, the pulse sensor, a power source to this spark unit, the voltage regulator, and the alternator generator thing are all going to be wired up for this to eventually run properly. But for now, just to see if we can get spark, we just need to feed power into that spark unit, which, looking at this diagram, you're going to start at the coil and start tracing stuff back. Where do these wires go? So the green is ground and the schematic, black is power and I'm sure in some spots red is power as well. But for Spark, we're gonna be looking at this black and white wire it needs to have 12 volts. So, he comes back, we can trace him backwards from the coil to the Spark unit, up through here to the ignition switch, which we can check for power there. And if we have power there, which we can check, and we don't, we can stop, but we don't have power, so we need to keep going back. Well, it looks like he is on a switched circuit right there, the black and white and the black at uh, bat 2 ignition. So that black wire needs to have power and it feeds the starter and the ignition for this. So we need to trace that black wire back to its source which is a fuel cut relay. So now if we are actually going to diagnose this we need to figure out which of these three wires powers that fuel cut relay and trace him back to the source and just keep going back until you eventually reach the battery and then work your way forward which is what we've done so we're at the battery we know we have power to these plugs we just tested it we're going to come up a little further these guys right here go into the voltage regulator so we're not worried about them right now but they are a good source to check if we have power moving past that point down there and if you check those sir we will see that we have 12 volts. So we got power into the harness. So somewhere after that point, but in the wiring that's going to be pertinent to everything else, these three wires, mm -hmm. specifically this larger gauge one, because it's a larger gauge, it's going to be carrying more amps. So this is probably the power wire into our circuit. So what we can do is chase him back to, have you found her there? Yep. And there's nothing plugged into it? Nope. It's got power to it. 12 volts. What uh, how many wires you got on that guy? Three, four, five, six. Six. Uh, red, red and black, yellow and black, blue and orange, brown and brown and white. That is our ignition switch. So that would that right there is the key for the bike. So without that switch, so we need a jumper wire. Yeah, nothing's gonna happen. Which yes, yeah, so we can exactly we can just jumper wire this, and it looks like that red one coming in yep. needs to connect to supply the other. oh look it says it right here uh, battery ignition <laughs> you want to hook the red to the red and black alrighty and we should have power That's easy enough having a good wiring diagram is absolutely key for troubleshooting electronics now there are a lot lot more in-depth things when it comes to electricity in vehicles like resistors and sensors and pickups and AC and DC voltages and this and that and that but for the most part what we ran into out in the wild everything still works it's just the wires got chewed up or someone else messed with it and it's wrong so a simple wiring diagram and then chasing voltage 
down the circuit, starting at the battery, following it to where it's supposed to go, and figuring out where it stops continuing further down the, the stream of the wiring harness, that is how you find dead spots in the harness and fix issues. Perfect example, we chased this all the way back to a missing plug, and then we found the key based off of our wiring diagram. And thankfully we have a really good wiring diagram, like everything's labeled. Yeah. So that's gonna make this easy. The Phoenix is gonna build a jumper between that red and red and black. And then we should be able to see if our start switch and kill switch work and start chasing it further down the line and checking for spark. All right. Let's just see if we got any power to it. Hey, 12 oh. volts to your kill switch. So turn that to run and hit that start button. Nothing. Nothing's happening, okay. Uh, what about the output on the start switch when you hit the button? It goes to 12. Okay, so the switch appears to be working. Let me trace through the wiring diagram down to our starter switch. So right here, BAT2 ST. Uh, the yellow and red is going to be your start wire. Okay. And he's going to go to the relay right back here. Sure enough, there he is. Yellow and red. Yep. Go ahead, sir. Pressing. All right, well, let's troubleshoot this solenoid because everything's working as far as the wiring goes. This guy is currently our dead spot in the system. So I was screwing around with this and I realized that we have red and green wire there too. And I thought, well, that's funny. I don't know why you would need more than just the, like the big ones right here, the feeds for the whole system, which we were talking about earlier, but the red and yellow. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> that scared the shit out of me. Anyway, yeah, there's this green and red wire coming out of the uh, starter solenoid right here. And if you follow him down through the entire map, he goes to the clutch switch. So that's something else we need to check to see if we're getting 12 volts to him, which let me do that quick. 10 volts. Well, see, now what I'm curious about is if we actually want zero volts because the clutch switch is the ground that closes the magnet because this just floats in the air. Let's see if we can find that clutch switch and make sure that thing's closed or open or whatever it wants to be. Don't worry, I got the clutch right here. <laughs> <laughs> it took a little bit of digging, but we found it. We were able to find it by tracking down this plug because we figured even though it's shown separate on this diagram, it looks to be in this loom after this connector further in line. And sure enough, it's actually all one plug on this year of bike. So there's our green and green and red. So we'll, uh, we'll jump those two then maybe, as long as we're neutral, we should crank over. Hey, I hear a relay. All right, now the next problem. Why, why no do nothing? I bet our relay is probably bad. Internally, it's probably uh, corroded. All right, so a little bit of diagnosis has showed that our relay is junk. And it's a very specific relay, so we don't really have one on hand. But uh, we can still use a screwdriver. Yep. So. We've tested for power. We've got 12 volts to our coil, where it's supposed to be, and 12 volts to our uh, water box. So, we're gonna have Phoenix crank over, and I'm gonna try to watch for a spark on like four plugs at once. Go again. I don't see nothing. I'm gonna do something brave. I'm gonna hold it and see if there's a light spark. All right. Just give her a little, a little tappy. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. She's flat. Okay. The diagnosis continues. I'd say we should probably get a new one of these. <laughs> what we can do is unplug the um, pulse generator side and check for an AC current to make sure everything inside the motor is working. And potentially we could use one or two Chevy HEI modules to fire those coils. In, instead of that box. Hey, whatever works. I mean, I just. I don't know if it works, but I mean, this, <laughs> the science says maybe. So I know those are a lot more readily available around here than whatever the hell that is. Yeah, probably. Let's try it. Let's try it. All right, back to the diagram. Pulse generator. We've got two coils. This runs a batch fire, I think. Uh, probably a batch fire waste spark system. Oh wow. Yeah, she's soaked in water. <laughs> Dry it out. A bowl of rice. <laughs> it works for phones, why wouldn't it work for this? I mean, maybe. <laughs> you got any you got any shop rice on hand? Just, where's the I got floor dry. Where's though. the floor dry? Just go stuff it in the floor dry. So seeing that this has two uh, coils 
and I see these wires are plugged into that pulse generator in groups of two and the color schemes are the same in groups of two, one being white with the primary color from the other wire. I think what I can do is put my multimeter between the blue and white and the blue and check for an AC current pulse and the yellow and the yellow and white and do the same as well to check that everything inside the motor is working. You check the oil face. You're not supposed to check the oil on a Honda. Now, now it's that not works. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's not even that bad. <laughs> We're definitely gonna I want to change that. any of that. <laughs> yeah. That's getting changed before we run it, but can attest. I've had three wheelers 12 times worse than that and they still run today. <laughs> Set this to the squiggly V. AKA alternating current. Give her a good long crank. Right. 0.8 volts, that's probably healthy. Let's check the other one. 0.68 volts, so they're within a decent realm of each other. While we're here, we'll check resistance. I've got, is that 506 ohm? I'm going to say it's good because they're spot on. Yeah. What this pulse generator is, is essentially like the inside of an HEI, which is a digitized point system in a distributor. It's got little teeth made of metal that go around and pass a sensor called a Hall effect sensor. And when that reluctor wheel passes those Hall effect sensors, it makes an AC current, which this box will then read that AC current and say, hey, now is the time to release the ground for the coils and make a spark, just like a HEI, or just like a point system, but digitized and in this case full of water. Everything internally is working. Can dry that board off a bit and try it again. Nothing there. Nothing there. Zero ohms, good there. So everything appears to be working. I think our board is just very unhappy with life. Uh, one more thing we do need to check is we actually need to test these coils. To make sure they're good as well but we've confirmed grounds we've confirmed continuity of all the wires everything is good let's uh get a couple pieces of wire and just do a quick dirty test on those coils so when it comes to coils a coil is a coil it doesn't really matter how it's making spark like what's feeding it it's just the fact that it is a primary and a secondary winding that build charge by having positive and negative connected and when you remove that negative you will get a spark Yep, oh yeah, there it is. Let's try the other one, same thing. I'm just gonna put one end on the negative side of the coil, leaving the key on, and just brush against the ground and he's gonna watch the plugs. Yep. yep. It's gonna be hard for you guys to see, but we'll try to get a shot where you can actually see the spark. There you, you can go. see it pretty good. I just gotta do like 10,000 RPM. <laughs> there are some high performance coils. We're getting spark. So yeah, coils are good. Um, our Hall effect sensor and everything, the pulse generator inside is good. Wiring is good. It comes down to the water box. Man, who could have foreseen that? <laughs> do you have a Chevy HEI laying around? I do. Ooh. I don't know if the world's ready for this one. <laughs> this is something. So, here's what I've done. The HEI modules are very simple. They're just like a point system, like I mentioned earlier. You just need a couple wires. You need one set of wires going from your Hall effect sensor into the module, which is what we have from the pulse generator. You need another wire that goes from the C terminal to the negative of the coil. And then you need a positive fed to B. Now note that positive also needs to connect to the coil. And then you'll need one more. You need a ground the case of the HEI, which I did by just shoving it in this vice grip down here. So potentially that far coil will have spark. Let's go ahead and plug these coils back in. <laughs> Are you ready, sir? Yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> it worked. A lot of spark. Oh my God, that's amazing. The water box failed us. <laughs> but the Chevy parts came through in a blaze of glory. Ready? Yep. Since this is a batch fire waste fire system, meaning it has two coils and it fires these two at the same time and these two at the same time, which means at the top of each stroke, this spark goes off. So at the top of the compression, it fires to make power. And then it goes off again 
at the top of the exhaust because the other cylinder it's linked to is going off of the compression. So that's what a batch fire system is. It's where it goes two, 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 but they're usually crossed. But the waste fires, it does two sparks per four cycle. So if we get another HEI module. I got plenty of those. And we hook it in over here. In theory, it would in run. theory, we will set up a batch fire, waste fire ignition system. Ta da! <laughs> well, one works, so two should be even better. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the world's first dual HEI spark injection system. <laughs> Are you ready, sir? Yep. A lot of spark there, so I hope it's correct. I don't. There's there's two wires here. There's a white with a green and a green with a red that are not in my wiring diagram. And there are computer chips in this, not just like things I would have anticipated seeing. So it probably reads temperature, or maybe that one of those is a lockout. I don't know. Rev limiter could be anything. Yeah. So we might have problems with timing with these because I'm sure that would adjust the timing, but. There's only one way to find out. Put the plugs in. Get the brake clean. <laughs> Here we go. This might actually freaking work with yeah. HEIs. $120. What's an HEI module cost you? Oh, 15 bucks. Yep. <laughs> by midnight you can't keep it <laughs> so while Phoenix is having supper with his family and doing his duties as a father I am messing with this mess some more because I can't leave well enough alone this is a lot more complicated than those and there's probably a reason I've been digging around online for a couple hours now and figured out what these center two wires are because the diagram I have does not include them the light green and red connects to all sorts of stuff including the neutral switch and a silicone rectifier and a bunch of stuff that should probably see ground if I had a guess. And our white and green wire right here runs down to harness to the kickstand switch. And sure enough, I went digging for him and he's been cut. And I think he needs to see ground for this to work properly. So I'm gonna ground this one, maybe ground this other one, and we'll see if this guy starts making spark because visually, there's nothing wrong with him. All right, we've got our module hooked back up. I've got a little splicer wire in there just to put the ground to the wire right next to it. Here we go. Oh, oh shit. We got a spark, it worked, it's fixed, ha ha! We can put the HEIs back in all the cars we stole them from. It seemed to run a lot better too. The timing was definitely not right with these, although it was kind of working. If I had a guess, that's a static timing where this is dynamic. Obviously, that's I know that's static, but I'm guessing this is dynamic where it changes the timing with all these chips. And the timing was just right for about 5,000 RPM and everywhere else it was wrong, which is why it didn't really run very well. But yeah, let's uh, 
get the case back on that, clean up some wiring, and see if this thing runs any longer. Except that, that's running. Phoenix, are you ready for a very monumental moment? It's either gonna run or it won't run. What'd you do? We don't need any of that. We need specifically 10 wires to make this thing run. To make this thing run. Oh, actually there's a few more, it's like 15. Okay. But Still, you just took off like all of it. <laughs> this is all just for turn signals and um horn gauges yeah all the all the controls yeah all right i'm gonna work on getting some permanent things wired into their appropriate places i'm gonna weld our clutch handle up <laughs> oh man <laughs> and then maybe an exhaust everything else while we're here too yeah might we're as gonna well. be doing wheelie donuts oh yeah by 10 30. all right update phoenix is working on a throttle We've already found a solution for a muffler. Uh, this was in my shop when I moved in and I just kept it for some reason because I never knew if I would need it. And sure enough, it fits like perfect and looks badass. <laughs> so that's gonna be amazing. It's the tonight. nicest thing on this rig. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> I've got all of our wiring simplified and everything's hooked up over here except for the power wire. And we've confirmed it all works. So now I'm gonna go through and hook up our toggle switches while Phoenix tries to figure out a throttle yep. off the foot feed. We'll update you guys when stuff gets done. So I just pulled off one of our uh, bowl drains and saw exactly what I was afraid of. The tip of it is rusted to shit. So I'm assuming our needle and seat and everything inside is all rusty. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna have to redo carbs or at least, at least pull them off. Pull them and off and pop the bottoms apart, bore everything out with a torch cleaner or something, see if we can make it run tonight. Kids, don't do that at home. Do it at, do it at Phoenix's shop. Do it at your friend's place. That's it. I'm totally walling the fire extinguisher to the golf cart. <laughs> Phoenix thought he literally burst into flames. <laughs> the prophecy. It's true. My hundred dollar machine's going, <laughs> going down in flames. All right, moment of truth. I'm expecting just about the worst. I'm actually gonna be confused if it's not the worst. Yep. That's, oh. that's not as bad as it could be. That's actually pretty recent water. Yeah. It's, it's just sludge. What? I just, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get these cleaned out. What's wrong, Phoenix? <laughs> so I, I managed to bend my drill bed somehow. <laughs> That'll still work, give her hell. So what I got. <laughs> <laughs> And there it went. This thing's gonna have better lights than my truck. <laughs> <laughs> I guess there is a little bit of tech I can drop on you guys right now. Um, a couple tools that are gonna help you are some of these little cleaner doodads, little torch cleaners, and then literal torch cleaners. Preferably the ones with a little file on the side versus just these straight ones. These will still work. You can use these to punch out all the crap that's in these jets. Like, I can't even see through that and it should be able to get at least the first or second size pin through there. And you can use these to clean like emulsion tube holes or the inside of the emulsion tubes, etc., etc. Uh, just take your time, clean everything up, use some brake cleaner, carburetor cleaner. Try to avoid hitting these gaskets. Although this is a Honda, doesn't matter. They're immortal. <laughs> 
I don't know why we were talking about car kits. We don't need those. It's a Honda. <laughs> Never put one in a Honda before. When you get to these Phillips screws, make sure you got the right screwdriver. There's more than one Phillips size. And smack the end of it with a wrench or a hammer or something to shock that screw into the body. That'll help get those threads free without stripping out your screw heads. We're halfway done with this. We'll continue on and hopefully have this done before my back stops working because I'm old and tired. How are you doing? Good. I got the lights tightened down, so, you know, it's the important thing. We don't need brakes or anything. Safety third, kids! <laughs> Don't do this at home. Alrighty, there we are. Four rebuilt carburetors, Honda style. Blast the mains and the pilot out with a torch cleaner and put it all back together with the old seals. What have you been up to? I put what? another support in for the, the seat. Ooh. That I still don't know what I'm gonna use for, but. <laughs> so I gave up on that project and now I'm over here <laughs> building a battery tray. Did you ever get the muffler welded? Muffler? Oh, I didn't put the support on that either. <laughs> it's been all over the place. Literally everything's half done. Phoenix, we got like 40 minutes till midnight. Oh, I tightened the lug nuts on the wheels too. Oh, that's oh, thank God. Yeah, because these are... Nah, that's a lug nut in front of a bolt so that the hub fits into this other wrong tire. That'll be fine. Worry about it later when it falls off. Bingo. <laughs> I'm gonna get those carburetors back on. Let's see if this thing runs. Sweet. Carburetors are on. Our headlights are wired up. Wham. Nice. Hell yeah. Got our kill switch, which is very important, especially for first rides on things. Our clutch. Uh, we do not have a shifter. We do not have brakes, but we've got a battery held down with a bungee cord and a gas can held down with a zip tie. And a well-mounted muffler. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. I finished yeah. that one. Time is it? Do we make our midnight cutoff? Uh, twelve twenty-four. Gotta sell it. <laughs> oh, no. we're we're in. You know what time zone is this? Central Superior Time. <laughs> yeah, like daylight savings is coming up, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're fine. Eight hours to take this thing from a non-running, totally crapped-out carburetor pile of wires to it's about to take its first drive around the yard, missing only brakes and a shifter. Sign me up, dude, that's a win. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. If you want some quality work like this done, call up Phoenix and Phoenix's powder coat. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I think we should see if this thing will fire up now. I, I would think you're, yeah. Let's do I it. mean, we're half past midnight. Let's see if it'll half-ass run. You got headlights, so that's good enough, right? And a working gas pedal. Look at the action on this thing. And it just so happens that he's he freaking nailed it where you get perfectly full throttle to idle every time. <laughs> That's permanent. <laughs> Are you ready, sir? Yeah, I'm gonna roll a choke. Too bad it's attached to poop, but 
That's every single one of these builds ever. The motor runs like ass. Man, if you actually put in time and effort to make something like this extremely nice, you'd lose ambition yeah. to finish it. Oh, no, it'd be horrible. Yeah. I think we should change the oil tomorrow. We'll take it for a real rip tomorrow in the daylight, but we got to do something tonight. Yeah. Do you want to drive it up and down the, the thing once? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. We got the ratchet strap special. Hey, but surprisingly. It's on there. Yeah, it ain't coming off. Unfortunately, you're not. <laughs> you're kind of chilling over here or anything else. Just turn left exclusively. <laughs> it's 1 a.m. I think we should go for a rip. <laughs> you know the best part? We never even had a single beer during all this. <laughs> we did do this completely sober, which is unheard of. And probably not for the best. <laughs> I, th I think we should have had a beer. Alrighty, sir. Are you, oh, you gotta get her in gear. Yep. I think one will be more than enough. Are you ready, sir? Yep. I can't help but notice nothing's happening. Oh, we might need to adjust this more. I need both hands. So whoever did this had the clutch cable installed wrong. We decided. There we go. After screwing around with some carburetor settings to include shoving screwdrivers in them to try to choke down the airflow yet increase the fuel by opening the constant velocity slides, we eventually got the thing to run long enough to do one pass into the cornfield and die. At this point, it was like 1.30 a.m. and 15 degrees outside and we were done. We decided to call it quits for the night and came back the next morning with more sleep and new ideas. Oh boy, it's that time of year again. So like I said, it is day two. We're working on this thing again. We've got some plans and ideas to make those carbs work. And if those don't work, I've got some plans and ideas to make something else work. Me too, nitrous. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> don't have to worry about it running if it's in 12,000 pieces. I got some fresh oil this morning for it since there's a bunch of water in the crankcase. We're gonna try to bolt this on, see if that helps our airflow a little bit. I'm gonna Google if we need a fuel pump or not, because if I had a guess, it probably had a vacuum fuel pump and maybe we're not even filling the bowls. Yeah. As soon as we can find out, we'll be back when it's actually time to rip around. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, well, it's a good thing we're changing it. Put there. chocolate milk in this one. <laughs> Better late than never, right? <laughs> yeah. Phoenix is putting in our fresh oil. I've got our fuel system all, all rigged up. I looked at the schematic and sure enough, there's supposed to be a fuel pump on these bikes and we straight up didn't have one. So yeah. I cleaned the carbs. The carbs should have ran way better than they did. Yeah. I think it just didn't have any fuel. That, and now we got the intake bolted on and stuff. Yeah, a, little more, of it. a little more tunnel ramage instead of just trying to breathe sideways. So yeah, we'll uh, get this oil finished up. Fire it up and see how it runs today. All right. All right. Try 37. Activating fuel leak. Here it goes. There we go. That's what it was. A lack of a fuel pump. Man, <laughs> we could have fixed that in 10 minutes last night. Damn it. Let's get this thing outside and see yep. what it does. <laughs> Let us rip up some cornfields. Phoenix, do you have any last words? Let's uh, let's party. <laughs> <laughs> All right, firing up the fuel leak. Fuel leak is active. He's gonna die. Let's, let's get out there so we can film it. <laughs> What'd you do? What happened? I don't know. It's like I ran out of gas. Try to fire it up. I wonder if it's building. Oh, see, yeah, it's, it's pissing out the vent tube over there. Yeah. <laughs> we flooded her. Yeah. I wondered if that pump was gonna be too much PSI. Yeah, just use your pump once in a while, I guess. Yeah, open her all the way. No, no choke. Oh, that didn't sound good. 
<laughs> What'd you do? <laughs> Why does it sound like a two stroke? <laughs> now what? Lost her chain. I wondered. There was a goofy noise. The adjustment. Where is it? Oh, you know what that pop was? I bet you rolled the whole axle forward. Yeah. Is it still on the sprocket up front? Oh wow, yeah. Yeah, it's something. Yeah. Something got closer <laughs> to the front of the vehicle. I think we need to loosen the bolts in this bar down here. Oh yeah, you see where it slid all the way forward? Yeah. I think it needs a wink taken out of it because I'm all the way maxed out here. Yeah, probably. But that's good enough. Are you ready, sir? Round two. That's like round 804. <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> He's <laughs> just doing circles. I got one good shot of you ripping past us. Let's refill it and see if we can get a couple more. Yeah, it definitely, uh, once you get into that power band on the RPM, it's it's right there with the throttle. It runs good. So a re-gear, rebuild the carbs yep. properly, and the proper fuel pump, and she'd be good to go. Yeah. Well, let's get more gas and run it not so good to go. Yep. <laughs> Fresh tank of gas. Are you ready again? Let's do it. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're turning the field. That's floored. <laughs> It's running good. It just needs re-geared really bad and a proper fuel pump. <laughs> Dude, it only left one tire track. It's two, one. Oh, he's coming again. We have officially built the dumbest golf cart. That's probably good until we get some safety apparatuses developed. <laughs> Dude. That had to have been all of 30. 30? I thought 30. you were doing 50. You had to have been doing 50. <laughs> I don't know. Dude, you passed me like I was picking up trash on the side of the highway. I feel like I'm in a space shuttle because I'm like flipping levers here and pulling the clutch and hanging on. <laughs> that was insane. Dude, this thing, once it gets in that RPM, it loves it. You passed us, and for 30 feet, there's only one tire track. One tire. Your left you, tires were up. You, were, you had a slight oh, right, right turn, and you were on one wheel in the back. You came so hard this way, and all your weight's going this way. Yeah, you <laughs> did not have your left right tires on. You re-gear this thing, like, drastically, and it might be good as it is for running and yeah. get the right fuel pressure into it so it's not flooding the bowls. Yep. So we put a car pump on and I'm sure there's supposed to be like two PSI and that's seven. Right. So no beans. Well with that ladies and gentlemen we can say that we've completed this video and Phoenix did not die <laughs> and this has come back to life. We hope you guys enjoyed the video of finishing our 
Facebook Marketplace find a 600 CBR golf cart motorcycle four wheeler build yep. with They're blazer seats. Blazer seats, Polaris rear end. Dumb. It works. Subscribe here to Junkyard Digs for more of this shit and car content. We will see you guys right here next week. Peace. Oh, he's going again. This is it. This is what he's going to die.